So I'm so excited to talk with you today. Um, and for those that don't know who we're talking to today, we're this is Dr. Devin Houston from Houston Enzymes. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, it's my pleasure, Kristen. So can you give us a little bit of background about how you got started and, and what your background is? Yeah, I, uh, I have a PhD in biochemistry from the University of South Alabama School of Medicine. Um, I went to traditional research route, took some postdoc positions at Virginia, St. Louis University, um, and a, a, a assistant professorship. Uh, the academic research um, kind of got a little bit uh, difficult as far as obtaining funding and such. So I decided to go look at uh, private industry. And um, I was living in St. Louis at the time, so there was an opening for a research and development manager at a enzyme manufacturing facility uh, in southern Missouri. So I checked it out, uh, did the interview process, and um, decided it would be a very interesting challenge. So uh, from there, I, knew, I had known, I had studied enzymes, all sorts of metabolic type enzymes all my life. That's what my graduate work was centered on um, and uh, in my other research centered on as well. So I knew a lot about enzymes. What I didn't realize um, or didn't really fully understand was um, how digestive enzymes as supplements could be used. So I learned a lot of application as well as the manufacturing processes and what goes into it. Um, and in that process, I met a lot of people and customers. Uh, and, a, uh, and a particular customer had a challenging product they wanted us to develop. Um, a, a product that would help people break down wheat and dairy proteins more efficiently. And because there's a lot of intolerance out there for those type of proteins. And uh, this particular company was more focused on on uh, the autism community. And that was where I initially learned that um, a lot of children, especially with autism, also have a lot of food intolerance and a lot of gut issues. So uh, that got me looking at the, the whole problem. And uh, I started attending conferences and such. And it, it, it just led me to, to where I am today. I, I, uh, started my own company in 2001 to develop products that were targeted toward the uh, autism community and their particular digestive issues. So, yes, um, and that was, gosh, 17, 18 years ago. And in the intervening years, we have found out a lot about the microbiome, uh, the bacterial population of the gut, and importance in health. For those that don't know what microbiome is. Yeah. Uh, Microbiome just basically means the, the population of bacteria that are supposed to be in the gut or that live in the gut. So there's good bacteria and bad bacteria. Uh, and it's a balance. There's a there's a, a balance between these two populations. All they're kind of fighting. They're fighting for resources, basically foods to help them multiply and, and populate. And what we found, one thing we, we just realized a few years ago that the bacteria in the gut play a crucial role in, in how the brain works. Those bacteria, different bacteria produce different compounds. We used to think that communication between the brain and the gut was one way from the brain to the gut. We now realize that it's two way and the gut produces compounds or the bacteria in the gut produces compounds that also feed back to the brain. So it is very delicate balance and if the, the microbiome can be affected by environment, uh, the type of foods you eat, the dietary changes, disease. Um, so it's become a focus. Um, we, we've already sequenced the, D, the human DNA. Now we are looking at sequencing the uh, genome of the different bacterial species in the gut. And that's going to be uh, a much harder and longer project. But we've already seen a, a lot of gains just from um, the past few years in understanding how diet, um, and enzyme supplements, and probiotics uh, can help and affect the, the bacteria in the gut 
uh, to support the, the digestive process in the way it's supposed to work. And so let's talk about enzymes. Right, this is clearly your passion. Yeah. Um, and you know, I remember way back in the day learning about enzymes, thinking I had no idea how important they were. Um, I think a lot of moms and dads out there watching this, or family members watching this, for you know, the, for themselves or for individuals they might be helping, might think, "Gosh, what? I, I don't have any digestive issues." You know, right. you know, and often we do have digestive issues, but they're you know, we don't understand what that means. Yeah. So let's talk about what is an enzyme and what are some of the symptoms of, you know, maybe what a digestive enzyme, I'm sorry, a digestive enzyme could help, let's say. Yeah, uh, unlike a lot of other supplements, um, it's hard to correlate the word enzyme to a particular um, health issue. We can talk about vitamin C, we correlate it with colds or vitamin E and heart health, uh, ginkgo biloba and memory support. Um, but enzyme, you say enzyme, and you can draw a blank. And that's because that's a broad category. But an enzyme is, is, is a protein that catalyzes a reaction. And, and the, the catalyst part is important. It means that the enzyme can cause something to happen, but it doesn't get used up or changed in the process. Which that means it's a very um, powerful molecule. It can keep... So like the Energizer Bunny, it can keep going and going and going as long as there's something for it to do. So um, enzymes may, means you just have a little bit of enzyme that can do a lot of work. So and there's at least four to 5,000 enzymes in the human body doing all sorts of different things. Every process in the body is controlled by an enzyme. And that's the other great thing about enzymes is that they are usually the um, stop lights in a, in a metabolic pathway. They regulate the process, the stop and go of, of uh, uh, metabolism. So they are regulated. And so a lot of pharmaceutical drugs actually target enzymes. If you control the enzyme, you can control the process. Now, if we go to a subset of enzymes, the digestive enzymes, they're a lot less complicated. They, all they do basically is break down the food we eat. And uh, because you can't, use a whole apple, rub it on your arm, and get the nutrition. And so when you eat any kind of food, it has to be broken down um, to its lowest subunit, to the, the lowest denominator molecule you can find. And that way, that supplies your body with the raw material to make its own um, products that it needs to, to survive. So um, just think of digestive enzymes as the things that help convert the food into energy, um, the calories, they help you get the, the most from the food you do eat. So, um, and what would that, what, let's say someone's watching this and they think, okay, well, I don't think I have any digestive issues. What are some symptoms of well, what? I, I used to be one of those people. Yeah. When I went to work for the enzyme manufacturer, I would never tried an enzyme supplement and um, actually, it took some convincing, uh, trying to convince me that they actually even worked. <laughs> uh, because I was always taught in med school that you know, any enzyme you took orally was going to be destroyed by the stomach acid. Well, plant-based digestive enzymes are very stable to, to acidic conditions. In fact, a lot of them even work better under acid conditions. So, um, I was skeptical, but since they had uh, they had a cafeteria, so we, they had enzyme bottles of enzymes on the table. So I just started taking them, and my goodness, it was just yeah. I didn't realize I had an issue until I started taking enzymes and felt so much better. The, the, I felt less tired. There was less bloating and gassiness. Um, just more regular. Just felt better, and um, I, I knew I was lactose intolerant. And uh, but evidently, I've got a lot of other intolerances. <laughs> and as you get older, things become more predominant. I've had my gallbladder removed, so I need help with fatty foods. And uh, so we have lipase is an enzyme that breaks down triglyceride fats. That helps with uh, with fat breakdown. Uh, I think I am getting more gluten intolerant as I age, but I find it hard to cut out wheat from my diet because I love breads mm -hmm. and such. So, but you can take a certain enzyme called proteases that will break down 
the gluten or casein, which is another protein which is found in dairy. Uh, so um, the upside is that they just make things work better and more efficiently. And they start the process quicker because most foods don't encounter your own pancreatic enzymes until the food mass moves into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. Um, these plant-based enzyme supplements actually start working in the stomach. So they start breaking down the, the food much quicker, uh, which would be about a couple hours sooner than what would normally occur. So you, you, that eases the, the work that the pancreatic enzymes or the GI tract has to do. So it just makes everything nicer. Um, you don't have to worry about toxicity issues because enzymes are just proteins and food proteins. It's like uh, eating chicken or, or beef, that's a protein. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, our bodies just handle enzyme proteins just as we would any other food, food protein. So for those kids out there or individuals, when I say kids, I mean kids of any age. They could be 2 to 52. It doesn't really matter the age. Um, but when you talk about bloating or you talk about, you know, digestive issues maybe not being regular, um, you know, a lot of times a lot of our um, individuals in the autism community may not ex be able to express language to let us know that they're feeling uncomfortable. So they may be having different behaviors and maybe those behaviors are happening, you know, maybe they have l lack of eye contact or they're not, um, you know, their attention span is less than it could be. Um, I know with my own son, he, I didn't really understand it, it until I started giving him enzymes and taking them myself. And to me, it was as though, um, well, for me, it was like putting on a new pair of glasses. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought my other glasses were great, and I didn't realize that, gosh, I wasn't really seeing everything as clear. Right. And so I, all of a sudden I was feeling better. And so for my son, you know, all of a sudden I could tell, like, his stomach wasn't as hard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he was going to the bathroom more. Um, and so it's not an end-all, be-all fix, but if it's one more thing that can help aid into having our kids have the best quality of life and feel better, because if they can't feel good, they can't do good. And that's what we always say um, at Autism Hope Alliance. And so I love enzymes, as you know, and um, I, I just think it's such a great topic. And now for those that, and I'm sure you get this question asked often, well, I take a probiotic. Isn't that an enzyme? In a way, yeah. Uh, probiotic just refers to any bacteria that normally resides in the GI tract. And uh, the bacteria do two things. They produce compounds that do different things, but they also produce their own set of enzymes to break down um, a lot of the things that, that we can't. Our bodies can't produce all the enzymes needed to break down all the different foods we eat. Uh, cellulose, for fiber, um, we just don't make those enzymes. But the bacteria produced by probiotic bacteria do. So, um, the issue is that probiotic bacteria, though, they have to be living to produce those enzymes. So if they're not thriving and producing and you know, multiplying and such, then they're not, you're not going to get the benefits of, of the compounds and the enzymes they produce. So that's where an enzyme supplement can come in um, because the enzyme supplement doesn't require an organism to produce it in the gut. It's already there. It's active. It can work. And you can take both a probiotic and yes, an enzyme. Yes, there's a role for both. Yeah. And they, they're not mutually exclusive. You, you can take both. And uh, I have not really seen any evidence that uh, enzymes affect probiotics. Um, but the nice thing is you can take them, you can time it differently if you want to still get the benefits of both. But there, there's a role for, for both. I think enzymes can work quicker. You don't have to worry about whether, trying to figure out whether the probiotic you're taking is actually living and taking taking hold uh, and growing it in, in your in the colon. Um, so yeah, uh, and also there's a lot of trial and error with probiotics because different people, different species thrive in different people's guts. Not a, a, a probiotic that works great for you may not like living in my gut. So that's that individual variation. Um, enzymes don't differentiate. Uh, a protease gonna, is a protease. That's right. They're gonna they're gonna do the same thing in your gut, in your stomach that they do in mine. Um, so it's nice. It's nice to know that we we know enough about enzymes to know what they do and how they do it. Uh, so we we know how they're controlled. Um, we know how 
much it takes to do a certain job. We can measure activity, that type of thing. With probiotics, it's a little different. Um, there's a lot of variability issues in that. And so for people that want to learn more about what you do, um, what's your website? So I know you have a great, you know, you, there's so many facts and questions answered on your, you know, uh, website, and they can learn more about the products that you offer. Sure. We, we uh, our website is designed to provide a lot of education, a lot of articles, uh, videos, presentations on there, but it's, uh, you can just Google Houston enzymes and find it, but our, our uh Domain address or website is HoustonEnzymes.com, all one word. And um, yeah, um, we we actually done a redesign and it's a more friendlier website and stuff. So you can order online, you can read uh, about they, me. They can call your company. They can call us. I'm always I try to make myself available uh, to usually through emails and, and such to uh, to help. Customers understand enzymes better and determine which type of enzyme would be best for their particular dietary issues. And so, for those families watching right now, maybe they just got the diagnosis or they're really new to this, you know, type of topic. What kind of advice can you give them? Well, it's there's a reason that the, the logo for autism is a is a puzzle piece. Again, your child is going to be different from the others. Now, there are some generalities, but the thing is, you have to keep searching. Don't get so bogged down by the amount of data thrown at you. And what works for one child may not work for another. Um, and there's no one thing that, well, it's usually a combination of different things. So you just have to keep trying, keep educating yourself. But take some time out for yourself as well. We, we are concerned for children's health. We should also be concerned for the parents' health and kind of reducing their stress. And reducing stress from dietary issues, I think, goes a long way in that as well. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for everything you do, Dr. Houston. It's You're a great inspiration to so many and a wealth of knowledge. So thank you for being here today. All right. Thank you.